The 805 Focus is brought to you in part by Nonprofit Connect. Nonprofit Connect provides superior leadership tools and resources so nonprofit leaders and board members can make valuable decisions to move their organization forward to a sustainable and vibrant future. More information on services online at nonprofitconnect.org. Welcome to 805 Focus. I'm Dr. Cinder Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect, and we will be bringing you the latest on your favorite nonprofits. So get ready to be inspired. Our special guest today is Debbie Laux, and Debbie is a board member and a legacy program director for Join Up International. Thank you so much for being with us, Debbie. Well, thank you for having me. I feel very welcomed. It's a oh. great setup you have here. Oh, good. Oh, good. I'm so glad. Well, you know, I have been peripheral, peripherally involved mm. with yes, and have known have. about Join Up for quite a number of years. Mm. And uh, I'm dying to hear what you folks are up to now. Okay. Um, and maybe, maybe for our viewers, a little background on join up and so sure I think you, I met you years ago now so our nonprofit was started in 1997 oh, join up 97. international I think it was probably the early 2000s when you came you put together a Girl Scout event that's right at our farm and you brought these young beautiful gals from um, how they probably like 7 to yes. 12 or 13 yes, yes, yes. I want to say it was a variety of ages yeah. And they all met Shy Boy, the Wild Mustang. Yes, Shy Boy. Oh my gosh! And they got to see a join up in the round pen, oh. and it was quite emotional. It's emotional. It's powerful. It's, it's powerful. amazing. It is powerful. We should tell people a little bit about yes, what yes, join yes. up is. Yes, yes. So join up is built on the body language. It's it's our body language, and it's a horse's body language in communication. So that sounds ooey, but it's not. It's just like signing for the deaf. Uh -huh. They're silent animals, you know, and they don't communicate. The whinny here and there is just a location thing, but um, they really do gesturally interact in a herd. And so we can emulate our bodies to describe sort of who's in charge. And that join up that we even had one of the children do was super powerful because we taught them to breathe and control their gestures so that the horse at first went away from them uh -huh. and then they did the invitation back and they joined up with them so the horse came to the little girl's yes. shoulder yes. breathed on her neck and she was like oh. and it's such a powerful thing yeah. and most people don't know that so why horses yes why horses yeah that's, I think that's the question we get a lot. So why is this so powerful? Why, why do horses respond to us this way? And I think that's, a, we're so used to dogs and cats and carnivores yes. in our house. Uh -huh. Their impetus, their motivation is based on finding food or earning food, you know, so it's mm -hmm. all about that. Horses, like dad likes to say, my dad's Monty Roberts. Yes. And he is a horse trainer extraordinaire. Oh boy! Understatement. He's he good. Sure, it, he's, he's good. Astonishing. <laughs> he is. He is. And he says no blade of grass has ever run from <laughs> from a horse. <laughs> so you know they don't have to stalk and kill and right. you know earn their food that way. Yeah. They do it by survival. That's how they um, learn to find water and you know in the wild. So horses have a different system of trusting us. Dogs, you know, our dog, he'll sell his soul for cheese. You know, right? <laughs> yeah. he'll do anything, right? <laughs> but horses will, they're more standoffish. You have to earn their trust. And that moment of join up that I just described that that little girl did in the round yeah. pen, that horse decided that she was better to be with than away from. Yeah. So you go through that full arc and it's really cool. So the definition of join up would be that moment when the horse decides it's better to be with you and can trust you than it is to be outside ah. the herd. But it also is a concept to live by for the life of the horse. If you walk into a stall, your horse people will know what I'm talking about, and this might be a little foreign, but I'll be quick. Uh. If you walk into a stall, if a horse turns its butt to you, 
That's rude in horse language. <laughs> oh. That means you're not controlling me. So if we do an eyes on eyes, you see how eyes on eyes sort of pop, right? Uh -huh. We're predators, they know this stuff. And uh, we'll do eyes on eyes, we we'll may even do a little gesture like this, you know, which and square the shoulders, which in their language is, woof, man, that's aggressive. Yeah, <laughs> oh wow. So we don't have to be so aggressive. Like we grew up with the, the cowboy movies where you know, you bucked them out, yeah, and you yeah. had a lot of drama and all yeah. that. And it's not necessary at all. They're very generous that way. And they want to know that you know their language. And they're super generous when you can communicate in theirs. So we use that in programs. So then the opposite yeah. of that, then, mm. it, it, using your body language, using that example, then, yeah. would be what? You turn away from the horse and yes. don't look at him, or you look down at the ground? Very good. Exactly. 45 degrees is an invitation. Oh. Right? You've softened. Your fingers should be closed. Your shoulders should be rounded a bit. And you've averted your eyes exactly right. It's the opposite of a predator. Because no predator goes in and grabs an animal and then lets yeah, go yeah, and yeah. goes away. That would be foreign. Yeah. So they know this. They, and <sighs> causing pain in the flight animal just validates what they were worried about in the first place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so dad's always gone against the pain, so. Gosh. Yeah. So, okay, um, so tell us what is going on these days. I know you have a lot of new programs. Yeah, thank you. And you're actually, I said program director, did I say legacy? Legacy program director. You did, director. yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I like that, thank you. I, I like that because it's not about me, it's about these concepts that dad discovered. And he would say it like that, he would say, um, that it, he doesn't know why he's just why didn't anybody in six thousand years stop this cycle of yeah. of, of domination over horses yeah. and you know I don't know what it is about us humans but he discovered as a little kid you know he jokes that he didn't get in the horse business until he was like three or four you know and <laughs> been in it ever since but he's been fortunate to be able to stay in it and because he was so in tune with horses at a very young age. He just kept exploring it. He's kind of sciencey geeky that way too, <laughs> which is good, because he was reading the horses all the time. And it's the reason he's won 11 world championships. My oh, grandfather, on the other hand, his father was brutal. Oh. Yeah. He was, he was the center of the target for horse training. He wrote a book even. Oh gosh. Published in 1957. It's really good he did because he sort of quantified what traditional horsemanship looked like. Yeah. And it's brutal. It's brutal. It's sacking out. It's tying up. It's, they call it swinging where they hung the horse from a pole. And you know it still goes on today. They just are a little bit more shy about it. And it's seen in third world countries and this country still too, I'm afraid to say. Gosh. But it's much more self-conscious now. People will say, oh, you should take that stuff behind the barn. No, you yeah, shouldn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should just figure out horses. So Gosh. the coolest thing, you asked about legacy strategies. Sure. So extending his knowledge into mm -hmm. the future is my goal. Okay. And he would say, oh, she's young. You know, I'm not young. <laughs> she, she's young. She's got a long way to go yet to, to get these concepts into a more, um, well, a movement. You know? Mm -hmm. and, yes. Yeah. A movement. A yes. movement. It, it is a movement away from violence in mm -hmm. the training of horses. Doesn't mean it's not high performance, though. And this is why it was so important to form a nonprofit, because if we didn't form a non nonprofit, we wouldn't be able to explore fully all these different ways to use the concepts. Uh -huh. We created a school, mm -hmm. which was super important, right? If you're the only one, if you're a founder of a concept or a discoverer of yeah. a concept, right. Uh, people don't know how to do it. So, shall I do a name dropper? Oh, sure, please. Okay. So in 1989, Dad and Mom, both uh, Monty and Pat Roberts, are uh, training at a high level in the thoroughbred industry, and that's mm -hmm. Flag is Up Farms in Solvang. Uh -huh. And uh, people can go visit seven days a week. I, I hope they'll it's bring their out. It's beautiful. Thank you, Cinder. You've been there quite a bit with our programs, too. Yeah. Um, and, and when they did that, they, you know, they made some magazine articles about them and everything, so, so there was some notoriety, but not on a, a great level. But the Queen of England is a reader and very much a horse girl and had a whole bunch of thoroughbreds at the time, pretty much dominant in the industry. Wow. This is before the shakes got involved in uh -huh. airplanes and a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. But um, she 
she was curious and she sent her head equerry over to see what dad did that was different. What was different about what he was doing? How could he do for so long things that other people weren't able to do? Like start a horse yes. and, without consternation and bucking and fighting and all the yeah. stuff we thought was traditional, right? Yeah. It was traditional, but we thought was necessary. It's not necessary. And so she did send her head, head equerry. He did invite dad to go back to the palace to show her in 1989. And then she insisted on a book. And he said, really? And he said, my English teacher will roll over in her grave. But, <laughs> but my mom helped a lot. He did write a book. And it's called The Man Who Listens to Horses. And it stayed on the New York Times bestseller list yeah. for 58 weeks. So now it sounds like we're doing great. But really, all he ever wanted to do was keep honing in on the concepts. Mm -hmm. And the thoroughbred industry has been slowly declining, you know, uh, since the 80s, really. So it gave him a nice pivot to be able to teach these concepts. So we started the nonprofit so that we could form a school without the, con you know, con constraints of having to make, you know, a lot of money for these people to come over and everything. Yeah. And um, really, I think the most incredible leap, though, for which he received the member of Victorian order medal from the Queen personally Gee. in her private offices was because he formed um, a concept called Horse Sense and Healing for our veterans and first responders. Oh, wow. And that was in 2010. And mm. that finally made that leap to the human to human and, and how horses can help humans. And, and I don't call it equine therapy. I think it is, but I don't call it that because sometimes people will think, well, that's for you know, children with disabilities or sure, something, sure. and it is, and it's wonderful. It gets autistic children to speak again, and it does wonderful things. But we're really equine-assisted learning, oh. I think. Oh, okay. So that you know, a policeman who comes because he's a first responder and is having a hard time um, mentally with post-traumatic stress, whatever it is that's really stressing them out, they can come for two or three days depending on the program, we've got Horse Sense and Healing, we've got Fired Up, we've got Partner Up, and we have Lead Up for the kids. They can come and spend a couple of days, and as you know, it's very chill on the farm. Oh, yeah. Drive down that driveway, it's, it's peaceful, it's, and even if they don't know what the heck they're doing on a horse farm, yeah. <laughs> when they pull up, they get it in a very short amount of time, and, uh -huh. and the kids, they want to be horse trainers when they leave. You know, <laughs> they go from oh, I don't know what. It, you know what I like about the kids program? Uh, it's called Lead Up for a reason. These kids are going to go one way or t'other. You know, right. they're going to lead something, and we right. hope they're going in a good direction. We've we've partnered before with PAL. We've mm -hmm. received kids oh, from the great. Police Activities uh -huh. League. You know, we've partnered with the Boys and Girls Club and Rec, rec Parks. Old School Cafe in San Francisco just last week brought their kids down for this experience because outside their programs they can do an experiential couple of days and it really cracks open their heads in a nice way. <laughs> <laughs> I think the coolest thing is you get these big macho kids in yeah. there, you know, they've been bullying people around and they can't. They're 180 yeah, pounds yeah, yeah. or something, you know, and they've been the strongest kid in the class every year. Maybe they're even the smartest and the strongest. That's good. They're getting good grades and everything. But we're worried about which direction they're going to take. Yeah. Put them in with a thousand pound animal who can go 40 miles an hour maybe yeah. around that round pin. Yeah. It takes pause, you know, and it gets them thinking outside themselves. We call it mindfulness uh. in, in some circles, you know, but for them, it's like, teach me. Teach me how I'm going to get in that round pen and do this correctly. We teach them breathing, diaphragmatic breathing, <gasps> oh, belly breathing, so they can bring their emotions down and their physiology down. It's powerful, Cinder. And yeah. you can imagine, because you saw it with the Girl Scouts, oh, yeah. imagine how that can get their attention yes you know I'd yeah. say yeah well wow, that's important work and yeah. and so you're saying people really come from all over to come to your farm yeah. to experience that uh, have come from around the world we mostly are based in Santa Barbara County with people because it's a lot of mm. you know travel these days anyway sure. we've been able to do this all through COVID too which has been great we're outdoors yeah we're six yes. feet apart you know we're okay that so it's been a, great. there's actually been a rise in participation in the last couple of years, which has been wonderful. So 
So do you folks uh, work with volunteers? Do you Thank ever you. need volunteers? We do. We do, you know, like any nonprofit program, the volunteers really make it. Uh -huh. And we've, in, for example, in the Horse Sense and Healing program, that is for veterans. It started with veterans and then moved, graduated out to first responders. We found that were a lot of military end up going into the service industries, mm. right? They become firemen, they become policemen after the military. So it sort of was a logical growth sure, pattern. Sure, yeah, yeah. And the nice thing about that is that they get mentored in the program. If they're really interested and want to learn more about horses, they kind of, we, we provide some education, some training, some MI. Have you heard of motivational interviewing? It's a, oh, it's good. Oh. It's, it's, I think of it as a layman's way to ask great leading questions so that they come to choices themselves. Uh -huh. But we have a, an MI, a mint trainer it's called, and that's a therapist who teaches us how to ask the right questions, and we always have a therapist there, of course, that too. That is great. The it's a great system. Uh, William Miller from the University of New Mexico is the developer of that with some partners, and that's back in the 90s. So we've followed him, he's followed us, because he uses horses now in his programs mm -hmm. to aversion therapy. Oh. Anyway, Mint is um, a great system, and we've, we've adopted that, and we've found now that some of the programs even in Santa Barbara County are starting to use motivational interviewing, or MI, too. Yeah. And the nice thing is we teach our volunteers to use MI. It's, it's like, don't ask an open-ended question. It's more like, how did that make you feel? How was the join-up for you? Yeah. Um, tell your horse, you know, we're gonna just lead this horse over into his, back into his stall. Tell the horse how it felt. I'll go away here now. You can talk to him. You know, and it's yeah. not silly because they just came out of this most incredible experience. Yeah. This horse breathed on its neck, chose chose them yeah. to trust. And I tell you, it just opens the floodgates. Oh man. It's incredible. So let's say somebody's watching this show okay. and they say, I want hey, I want to go volunteer. Can they go on your website and figure out how to do that? Yes, and please. It sounds like you give them training. And we do. Probably. Yeah, what we could use is, is people that either can lead horses and handle horses, you know, and they can be a part of our uh -huh. back and forth. That would be awesome if you're a horse person at all. Then we've got areas for that. But even if you had, know nothing about horses, we're really good at educating people about the nature of horses too. Okay. So they can go to either... MontyRoberts.com, right? You know, yeah. MontyRoberts.com, M-O-N-T-Y, and you look on Outreach, which is our nonprofit programs, uh -huh. or go directly to the nonprofit site, which is join-up.org. So joinup.org okay. with a hyphen. Yeah, okay. and either way, they, they can fill out the the form right in there, which sends it to us, and I get our instructor on it. That's and exciting. And so, is. and while they're on your website, mm -hmm. I bet you might have a donate now button because oh, you're a nonprofit, we right? Do. Yeah, we do. Thank you. For that. You yeah. welcome tax well, deductible that's what runs donations. A tax deductible donations. You know, it doesn't work without the community getting involved. Right. And we, my husband and I, have now taken on the farm. My parents want to live there for the rest of their lives and we felt this was the only way to secure that for sure they're in their 80s now very mm -hmm. active i can't keep up with them um, my mom still shows horses dad's still training wild horses oh, out there gosh. on the farm but uh, you know there is a time of transition so i'm an intern now cinder <laughs> <laughs> i'm That's interning under them hard to believe. and it, it does it, the only way that it'll extend is if we get community partnering with that. But I want the property to remain a community property. Uh, We've had visitors welcome on the outside of the gate. Uh -huh. We're right between Builton and Solvang, the big white gate. Flag is up farms, Monty yeah, and Pat. Yeah, yeah. Without people coming in and volunteering, donations, foundations supporting, we I, yeah. I don't know how we could hold back the the gates, you know, yeah, yeah, but sure. we have a plan now that I think really smart people are helping us with, really oh. dedicated community leaders are helping us with, and I think they see the value <sighs> and, and the weight that the, you know, keeping horses in our lives is expensive, right? You oh, know, everybody sure, sure. goes, oh, you know, you oh, gotta yeah. be affluent to have horses. Yeah. Eh, you gotta be dedicated is what it is really, because you can make it happen yeah. if, you, if you want it. But I think once we see more pervasively how important horses are as a flight animal uh -huh. to the human. 
I think you're gonna see more in therapy or equine assisted learning happening, which means I wanna keep horses in people's lives. Yes. Because yes. even if they don't wanna be trainers or even ride horses, there's so many qualities of the flight animal or the, the, the animal that would rather not fight and would rather get along with people or just go away. And nonviolence oh in gosh. our world yes. right now, oh. is that a message that yeah. everybody needs? And when you see that, I think that's the piece that you get on the property. And I want that to be generational. Gosh. Yeah. Debbie, you are just doing amazing work. Thank you. We are so lucky to have you all there. It's the and good for you for carrying on the torch, you. making sure that it continues for the future for yep. the whole community and then some. Well, the community is uh, going to get behind that. I you hope. are a treasure, my dear. Oh, thank you. Here's... And thank you for being on our show. Thanks for giving it a platform. I appreciate your show. Yes. And thank you for joining us on 805 Focus, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>